Sometimes people ask me, why do you believe that Christianity is true? Of course, there's a lot of answers to that question. I mean, first of all, I think the resurrection actually happened. I think the historical evidence for the resurrection is really stunning, stunning enough that many agnostics and atheists actually admit that something there happened that was out of the ordinary. I think also the Bible can be demonstrated to be true and a trustworthy source about the life of Jesus Christ. And of course, I believe Christianity is true because I personally have a relationship with Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit lives within me. You know, it's that whole, this is how I know He lives, He lives within my heart, you know, sort of thing. But there's another side of that, and that is, I think Christianity gets the human condition right. Now let me explain what I mean by that. All worldviews, all belief systems and philosophies have to answer the question, what is a human being? What is the state of the human condition? Now, we can put different belief systems and worldviews into categories. So, for example, the naturalistic worldviews. That would be any belief system, philosophy, worldview that would say that the natural physical world is all that exists. There's no God, there's no heaven, there's no spiritual side of reality. Only the physical world exists. The universe is a result of natural causes and processes, and so are humans. That would be belief systems like, you know, atheism or hedonism, the life that's pursuing pleasure, or nihilism, the idea that life is meaningless and worth nothing, uh, or secular humanism, or any of the other forms of secularism, that religion is just this private personal belief, but reality itself is really physical and science tells us the truth about everything that is. Now, any of those worldviews are going to say that human beings are essentially the result of mindless chance causes and processes, mostly the Darwinian evolutionary process. And what that means is, is that humans are essentially animals. We're a highly evolved species and really no different in value or dignity than any other living thing. Now, a lot of people have believed this. Charles Darwin obviously was one that believed this. Uh, Albert Camus was one that believed this. And because he believed that there was really nothing special or dignified about human beings, he believed that the only great question to ask in philosophy was, should we commit suicide? Uh, there are other examples uh, you know, of this a a as well. Maybe the most popular spokesperson today is Richard Dawkins. There's a the Australian ethicist Peter Singer, who actually argues that if you think humans are more valuable than anyone else, you're a speciesist. In other words, you're in, in the same way that a racist would prefer one race, you're a speciesist because you're preferring one species over another animal species. Now there's a lot that this would explain. For example, it would explain why there are so many similarities between humans and animals. And it would explain, you know, why humans do bad things, you know, according to maybe the will to survive or, or something like that. But it leaves a lot of things unexplained. It leaves, for example, unexplained the human tendency to, to altruism or benevolence. Well, why do we try to help others when there's nothing in it for us? Why does the hero fight for the weak instead of just trying to uh, attain power? And it also doesn't explain just ridiculous acts of, of what we might call just over-the-top um, evil. That's just evil for evil's sake, kind of like the Joker in The Last Batman. Now, on the other hand, there would be those worldviews that I would call transcendental worldviews. And that's just a big word to say. These are the worldviews that say that the physical world is an illusion and the spiritual world is the real world. In other words, that really what a human being is, is an emanation or an expression of the divine spirit that is the essence of all things. This would come out of a lot of Eastern religions or Eastern worldviews, but the most popular expressions in our culture is just kind of the New Agey stuff. What we see from Oprah Winfrey or maybe what we see, you know, in kind of the Hollywood expression of spirituality, a popular movement maybe like The Secret, uh, you know, or something like that. Whereas naturalistic worldviews, those ones we talked about just a minute ago, all give humans a demotion and make us essentially animals. These worldviews essentially give humans a promotion. We're not different than God. God's not someone out there that we need to go find. God is in here. God is everything, and we are God. God is all. All is God. God is us. We are God. Now, this would explain why humans like to be unified, why we're drawn to each other, why we seek significant relationships, but it doesn't really explain real evil. I mean, if we're all God, why are we so selfish? If we all seek unity, why so often do we try to actually hurt other people? And what about those you know, real acts of person-on-person -person evil, like you know, rape and terrorism and, and, and things like that? Blaise Pascal was a 17th century mathematician. He was a genius. Uh, and, and late in his life, he converted to Christianity, and he started to look at the human condition. And here's what he said about the human condition. Pascal thought that man's greatness and wretchedness 
are so evident that the true religion must necessarily teach both. In other words, any philosophy that explains human wretchedness but not human greatness, or any philosophy that explains human greatness but not human wretchedness, needed to be abandoned because it didn't explain what was obviously a part of the human condition. And that's both of these things. Pascal also thought that it was exactly at this point that Christianity is the strongest in explaining both of these realities. And I think he's right because in the Christian worldview you have an explanation for human greatness. The idea that humans were made in the image and in the likeness of God. That God actually saw fit to create us different than the animals. The creation of the human person was the pinnacle of the creation story. And humans were actually endowed with dignity and value and incredible capacity to care for and steward and actually make the world a better place. But the scriptures also talk about how that's not the end of the story. This image of God and this human dignity that was bestowed on us by our Creator, something's gone wrong with it. In fact, in the words of John Milton in the poem Paradise Lost, he talks about the image has been defaced. And so now what we have is this incredible human capacity and this incredible human dignity that sometimes is used for wrong purposes. The, the most creative minds can be the most diabolical. The greatest leaders in history can be some of the most evil. Even some of our best intentions can be twisted and used for selfish gains, sometimes when we don't even realize that we're being selfish in the first place. So something has gone wrong. And it was the reality of this tension, the greatness of the human condition and the wretchedness of the human condition that fascinated Blaise Pascal. And it seems to be something that Christianity gets right when all the other worldviews don't. Whereas the naturalistic worldviews want to say, you know what, we're just an animal and give us a demotion. And the transcendental worldviews want to say, no, we're all God and give us a promotion. What Christianity says is that we were made in the image and likeness of God, but now we act like animals. How Christianity explained that tension between human greatness and human wretchedness is something that fascinated Pascal. In fact, here's what he said. What sort of freak then is man? How novel, how monstrous, how chaotic, how paradoxical, how prodigious, judge of all things, feeble earthworm, repository of truth, sink of doubt and error, both the glory and the refuse of the universe. And this is what Christianity best explains. Whereas naturalistic worldviews want to give humans a demotion and say we're just animals, and transcendental worldviews want to say that we're God and give us a promotion, Christianity says humans are made in the image of God, but we act like animals. Like Pascal said, we're the glory and the garbage of the universe. <laughs>